Terry Allen, Trees, 1986. When I first asked Terry to come to the university and think about a project for the Stewart Collection, he said, Mary, outdoor art is for the birds. When I go outdoors, I don't want to look at art. I want to look at nature. And I kept urging him, and he came up finally with three wonderful ideas. We chose this idea of the singing, talking trees. So Terry chose three trees that he liked the shape of. These trees had been cut down by the university to make room for more buildings. Um, so he saved three trees and gave them a new life. Uh, we had them creosoted like telephone poles so that they would be preserved and then he covered them with this protective lead skin. Uh, lead absorbs the light um, instead of reflects it so you don't necessarily notice the trees, the Terry Allen trees, as you're walking through the grove because they're gray and they're not shiny and they look kind of like the other trees. Terry planted these trees back into the grove where a tree had fallen. Um, and then he gave them a new life by wiring two of them for sound. The Duke is rarely made by ducks, but it does attract them. The surprise recognition call is very personal. And so that there is the music tree, and then there's the poems and stories tree. And then he invited friends and artists and writers and musicians who he either knew or, or just admired to contribute to the trees. So we have everything from a song uh, by David Byrne of the Talking Heads. We have um, William Wiley, an important painter, singing Ghost Riders in the Sky with a musical instrument he made. There are silences between the various songs or poems or stories. So you might come upon them and just go by them without ever hearing or noticing them. Uh, you might come upon them when they are talking or singing and you can stay as long as you want. There's about six hours of material on each one. The Silent Tree is an example of how a piece in the Stewart Collection uh, continues to uh, sort of be alive in, in that the library was completely reconfigured at one point in the 1990s. And uh, originally, the Silent Tree was sort of off to the right-hand side of the library in the landscape standing there silently, and as part of this reconfiguration, it had to be moved. It had to be removed and relocated. And Terry came back, and he chose this very frontal, uh, sort of front and center positioning of it. Uh, so it became really part of the facade of the library. When you're looking at the library from the front, you will always see this tree. It, in a way, sort of became more part of the campus than it was before. <laughs> 